So my wife is an exceptional cook. And this isn't just a biased husband's opinion either. She has become known among our friends and family for her skills in the kitchen. It still amazes me after taking stock of what we have in the house, she can just come up with something that tastes good. Now, that isn't to say that I never do the cooking, but I don't know how to cook. And that sounded confusing, so let me explain. There is a difference between knowing how to cook and cooking food. Like, many people can find a recipe online, scroll past the thousand word essay to get to the instructions, follow the steps, and they may recreate something that looks like the meal that was being detailed. And these same people, of which I am included, need explicit instructions to accomplish that task. Like, don't tell me to cook the sauce until it changes color. Tell me to cook the sauce for exactly five minutes. You see, we can only create if someone holds our hand through the entire process. We are not making any decisions. We are automatons being controlled by online chefs. We do not know how to cook. And then there's those people that are like my wife. These people too may use a recipe, but how they interact with that recipe is pulls apart. They may change an ingredient, they may reorder the steps, and they may use a completely different technique than what is being described to create the dish, and that's because they know how to cook. When Christians come to the Bible, we too often depend on digital chefs to handhold us while we read. Now real quick, I do want to say that the plethora of study tools that proliferate our modern, our modern society is a blessing. The fact that we can learn from those who have spent time in the minds of biblical studies gives us a great advantage. An answer to a question that took a theologian years to find a hundred years ago can be found in minutes. We truly are hashtag blessed. However, with great power comes great responsibility. The problem with shortcuts can be that you forget the original intentionality behind the designated path. Returning to my cooking analogy, the reason my wife can be part of those who know how to cook comes from the fact that she has spent the time and energy required to join that elite group. Being inspired by her dad, she started cooking at a young age. She has had plenty of time to experiment, learn techniques, and understand why an ingredient reacts the way it does in a pan. And to be fair, she also loves to cook and wanted to be a professional chef. I, on the other hand, do not like to cook. I describe my method of cooking as a controlled panic as I anxiously try to follow the steps correctly while constantly praying that whatever comes out on the other end is edible. The truth is, becoming a good cook takes work. And the Bible is no different. Yet this is something we can so easily forget. I know I had thought that I had heard almost everything there is to say about the Bible after growing up going to church all my life and then going to a private Christian school and then going to a private Christian university. I felt I heard a lesson or sermon for any story, passage, character, or anything else in scripture. This led to a period in my life when the Bible became boring because my upbringing had presented it as just a simple book. And that is simply not true. The tr real truth is that most of the Bible is not easy to read or understand. For example, I try to read the entire Bible once a year. And every time I come to the descriptions of how to build the tabernacle in Exodus or some rather strange language in the various prophets, it's hard for me to want to keep going. Even the New Testament can sometimes be hard to get through, for as much as the Western Church loves Paul, his letters are not always clear. First, second, and third John can be confusing with their circular writing and their lack of context for who any of these people are that he's mentioning. And a quick Google search will instantly reveal the myriad of ways people understand Revelation. Again, that is not to say that it is impossible to pick up the Bible, read something, and get something out of it. I mean, I can throw a frozen pizza in the oven and enjoy the result. Nevertheless, I also know how far and wide the chasm is between my easy baked pie and one produced in Naples, Italy. Does that mean we all need to become biblical scholars to read the Bible wisely? Thankfully, no. Again, we do get to stand on the shoulders of giants. Reading academic articles quickly shows how the most brilliant among us rely on others to help properly grasp what it is that we are reading. A talented chef is always learning from other talented chefs, you know, the whole iron sharpening iron thing. 
And with that said, we do need to understand fun foundational concepts and practices. I mean, I would love it if every Christian spent time learning Greek and Hebrew, but also know that the vast majority will not. However, since we do live with a treasure trove of resources, these ancient languages are actually not that far out of reach. I mean, the key to all of this is that we must learn how to use the tools we have been given. In all of this, I do not want to discourage you from simply reading the Bible. I also do not want to dissuade you from using pre-made Bible studies or other programs. I mean, even the best chefs in the world started out making simple dishes and following pre-made plans. But just don't stay there. Don't be content with only being able to microwave a frozen meal or fo mindlessly following the steps of a recipe. I mean, be curious. Well, why this ingredient? Why do I boil this but bake that? I mean, learn to be able to notice when the sauce changes color and not just rely on a preset timer. Or as Marty Solomon puts it, we need to learn to ask better questions of the Bible. And the good news is that it does get easier with time. I mean, for the third year in a row, I have made my grandmother's Christmas cookies. And each year, the process has become more familiar, right? The time it takes me to finish shortens, and most importantly, the cookies turn out better. And the, Bi the Bible, it's the same way. I mean, the Bible is not an easy book. It is often not simple, it's not straightforward, and not speaking in a way that overtly guides us in our time and place. But if we put in the work, we'll find that scripture comes alive before us. Thank you again for watching. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. I hope that you are enjoying this journey on biblical literacy with me this year. Um, if you like this, please make sure you like and subscribe. Feel free to share this with somebody. And if you'd like to read or listen to a version of this, links are down below. Anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week.